What's up, my name is Tech Number here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a bit of a different video. So I was reached out to by Tardigrade from the wonderful people at Storage Labs. Tardigrade is a simple decentralized cloud storage solution. Files are encrypted, split up into smaller pieces, then distributed around the world. They talk about consistent performance at a much cheaper cost as a main focus of their project. It's a cool idea. I had previously heard about them because of their long included integration in FileZilla, previously just under the storage name. Now they've teamed up with FileZilla to give you a one terabyte cloud storage solution for three months completely free. Before we get into the crash course tutorial, the link is in the description down below. I don't get a kickback for the use of the link and thanks to Tardigrade by Storage Labs for sponsoring the creation of this video. So to begin, let's jump right into it. Let's grab one terabyte of free cloud storage for three months. Head across to the first link in the description down below and we'll get to this page over here. Simply start by entering your email address. I'll enter troubleshoot at techno.co. Then click get one terabyte free cloud storage. It's as easy as that. There's a quick start video over here from the founder of Storage Labs, but I'll be guiding you through it anyway. We'll simply be connecting to this inside of FileZilla. Don't worry, if you don't have it installed, I'll be going through that now. If you do have it installed, check the description down below or the play bar right below the video to skip forward. To get started with FileZilla, simply head across to the second link in the description down below, which will take you to the FileZilla download page. When you get here, simply click Download FileZilla Client and then Download FileZilla Client once again, followed by Download under the free normal FileZilla section here. Of course, if you're using another platform instead of Windows 64-bit, use one of these links down here. Windows 32, OS X, Linux 64, and Linux 32. When the download finishes, simply click on it to open it up. Once it's open, read through the license agreement and then hit I agree. Then I'll leave it as is, next, and I'll choose what to install. I'll simply create a desktop icon as well and then click next. I'll choose where to install it, next. Choose a start menu folder, but I'll leave it as is, next. And then I get an offer to install an antivirus. I'll click decline here as I wouldn't want it. After it's done, I can simply leave it as is and hit finish to start up the FileZilla client. I'll hit OK and now we have it open. Then after FileZilla opens up, we'll begin linking this with our Tardigrid account and then uploading and downloading files. It's pretty easy to get started. As you can see, here's the integration advertisement with Tardigrid. I'll click dismiss for now. Hit Control S to bring up your site manager. This is where all of your accounts are saved within FileZilla. Click new site and then enter any name you want. I'll call it Troubleshoot Tardigrade. Click anywhere or hit enter to save it. On the right hand side, from the protocol list, we'll choose Tardigrade Decentralized Cloud Storage. This is where it used to be just storage. After that, we get some different boxes to fill in. Head back to the page that we just entered our email address on and we'll be copying some info from here. Under the satellite section, simply click the copy button to copy this text here. Then paste it into the satellite box over here. Then heading back to the web page, click copy next to API key and paste that in next to API key down here as you expected. Now, because encryption is all client side, they don't see the true files that you're uploading and downloading to their storage solution. That is what this encryption passphrase is over here. In here, you can enter any password you want, just make sure to remember it as there's no way to rescue your files if you forget this password. Because everything is encrypted file side, you are the one responsible for your files and this password. I'll enter something simple in here, but of course, you should have a longer, more secure password. After doing that, simply click connect and when you're asked by FileZilla if you'd like to remember passwords, I do like to save them, but make sure you have this bottom option over here selected, otherwise your passwords will be saved in plain text. If you ever were to get a virus, then simply be able to grab that password and have access to all of your saved websites within FileZilla. So either have do not save selected and remember your password, or click save passwords protected by a master password and enter a password for FileZilla here. This isn't at all related to Tardigrid or Storage Labs. This is purely a FileZilla feature. I'll click OK and then we're immediately connected to our Tardigrid cloud storage solution. You won't see too much to hint that other than this text at the very top. Directory listing successful. We're connected. If you'd ever like to get back here when restarting FileZilla, simply hit Control S and then double click on the site on the far left hand side. Enter your master password, hit enter and then you'll be able to connect. It's that simple. So next up, let's get to uploading and downloading some files. On the left hand side is your local computer and file system. On the right hand side is the remote file system of Tardigrid or wherever you're connected to. So on the left hand side, I'll navigate to desktop, 
followed by the documents folder over here, which is a bunch of files I'd like to upload. Files in here range from designs to a bunch of images, to a bunch of larger media files. These are some of the videos that I've uploaded previously, as well as my intro card over here. So uploading files is very similar to any other cloud service, but we can't just straight upload files by dragging them across into the root directory, for now at least. We need to first place them into a folder on the remote server over here called a bucket. Not a huge issue, especially if you're well organized. They do plan on improving this in the future, of course. We'll right click on the remote sign over here and click create directory. Then we'll call it whatever we want. It has to start with a lowercase letter or a number. So I'll call it documents. Then once we've made our folder, we can simply open it up. And at the very top, we'll see the tree that we currently are in. We can head back here to the root folder and create a couple more buckets if we'd like. But instead, I'll open up the documents bucket and I'll upload some files immediately. I'll simply drag and drop them across from my client side to the remote side. And immediately they'll be added to the queue at the very bottom over here. They'll start being uploaded and then they'll appear on the right hand side on our remote server side. As you can see, performance is pretty good, especially because it's distributed around the world. I currently have a 200 megabit fiber line located in South Africa. If I open up my task manager and pull it across, head across to the performance section over here, you can see it's well saturating the 200 megabits per second I have available. As you can see, it's busy uploading these files and we'll see these 2.2 gigabytes worth of files uploaded in no time. I'll simply leave this going and time lapse it through so that you can see how long it takes to upload two gigs through a 200 megabit fiber line. And now the file transfer has completed, the queue is empty. If you'd like to see if any files have failed, they'll be listed under the failed transfer section over here. Then you can simply right click on them and click reset and requeue all or simply just do it to a few. After doing that, you can right click on the queued files section and click process queue. That'll retry the uploads. After everything's done, you'll see all of the file transfers listed in the successful transfer section over here. It's that simple. Now we have all of these files on the cloud over here. Let's go ahead and download them to a different folder. I'll double click the two dots at the very top to go up one folder and we're on the desktop section over here. I'll drag and drop a couple of the files across to show you the download performance. I'll simply select a few, drag and drop them across to my desktop as such, and then wait for the downloads to start and then complete. I'll simply time lapse this once again and we'll see how long it takes to download all of these sections, stick them back together and decrypt them. And now the file transfer is complete, we downloaded these files and they're appearing on our desktop. To remove them from the server, we can simply right click on the files in FileZilla and click delete. After hitting yes, the files are then permanently deleted. It's that simple. So that's how incredibly simple it is to upload and download files to Tardigrid using FileZilla. It works pretty much exactly the same as any other FTP solution, just it's encrypted, decentralized, and pretty fast. To make it even faster, you probably could head into edit, settings, transfers, and then raise the maximum number of simultaneous transfers just to make things a bit faster. Of course, you will need the PC and internet strong enough to do this properly. I'll hit OK, and we'll see what uploading all of these files again looks like. I'll quickly just download them to my desktop and then upload them all once again. So right click, delete, remove them from my server, then I'll select them all either from this section over here, or I can select them on Windows and simply drag and drop them across into the remote side as such. Now all of these files should be uploading at once and my connection should be fully saturated at the full 200 megabit per second that I have available. Those little spikes where it seemed to drop in between section uploads should be a lot faster. I would assume that the download curve should be a lot smoother and pinned to the full speed of my internet connection. And that seems to be exactly what's happening. Now I'm using my full internet connection, uploading at the maximum speed possible as I'm uploading more than just one or two files, keeping it pinned for a lot longer. If I upload more than just a few files at once, it'd probably be using my full internet connection fully. To cancel transfers, I'll simply select them at the bottom and click stop and remove all, or simply remove selected to remove the ones that I just have selected. It's easy enough to upload files and download them from one computer, but we can of course add these exact same details on another computer using FileZilla to download or upload files from there. If we do, simply right click on the remote section and click refresh to see any new files that may have appeared or see which ones were deleted, if any. I'll head back to my site manager with Control S 
and I'll copy the satellite link as well as the API key over here and paste them into the exact same place on my desktop computer. So I'll simply make the sandbox a bit smaller and demonstrate what it would be like using another computer. This of course is a virtualized machine and this is my main machine over here. Pressing start, I can open up FileZilla Pro, which is what I mainly use for transferring files to my FTP solutions. I'll hit Control S, new site, and I'll enter a name. I'll just call it Tardigrid. Then I'll select the protocol type, Tardigrid, copy and paste the satellite link across, as well as the API key. Entering a different pass key, let's see what happens when we click connect. We see a documents folder that seems to be empty. Why is this? Well, simply because our files are encrypted and this is the wrong decryption key. Looking back in our virtual machine, we can refresh the folder and all of our files are still here that we can move them back and forth. So I'll hit Control S to bring up this window and I'll type in the correct encryption passphrase. Then I'll click connect once again, abort previous connection and connect in current tab. Okay, it'll disconnect us, reconnect us. I'll open up the documents folder and there's all of the files over there that we saw just a second ago on our other computer here. Let's go ahead and delete say these image files over here and upload say a video file off of my desktop over here. I'll drag and drop it across into the remote section over here. It'll upload and then appear in the remote section over here. Looking back at our other computer, you can see it hasn't appeared just yet. I'll right click, click refresh, and now we have our files over here. I can then drag and drop them out onto the desktop or anywhere else. They'll download and work as expected. It's that simple. So anyways, thanks again to Tardigrid by Storage Labs for sponsoring the creation of this video. My name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.